Hi, my name is Brian Butler, and I'm the associate pastor here at Densmore Baptist Church. And Dr. Butler, our pastor, is my dad. Is this where I actually get to say the embarrassing stories? That's what I thought. Orvidale Cox. I am Winston Butler's older sister. When Winston and I were young, our um, mother worked a lot of different jobs, and so did our older sister. Well, one of mine and Winston's jobs were we had to keep the house cleaned. And when we would find out what time mom was coming home from work, we would uh, run around throwing things in the closet, hiding them from our mom's because we didn't think she would she would find them, you know. But then we'd start sweeping the floor, and we'd pick up the rug and sweep the dirt up under the rug so so um, the house looked clean, and Mama was always proud of us. And I don't think we ever told anybody what we did until now. <laughs> I never grew up knowing my dad really was a pastor. I just remember going to church and realizing that my dad was on stage. And so... Um, when he would get up there and speak, I'll just be honest, I'd, I'd, I would tune out and not listen. I mean, how many years he's been pastor now? Not just at Densmore, but in general. I think he said that he had, you start from the beginning, my dad was a pastor at 19 years old. I couldn't imagine what it must be like to have the pressure of being a pastor at 19, or what church would be that, <laughs> you know, go, hey, let's hire this 19 year old kid to be pastor. I mean, my dad's been pastor at Home Garden. He was the pastor in uh, Hastings, Florida, out in Live Oak, Keystone, Florida, um, Kingsport, Tennessee. And, you know, I would have never imagined we'd be living in Jacksonville, Florida. I mean, when we moved uh, from Tennessee and came to Jacksonville, uh, my father had stepped down from the church and was deciding to uh, take, our, take us back home to Jacksonville, be around family. And uh, my dad was asking, you know, how do, you know, what do we do? He's, I remember hearing him pray, sitting down, talking to my mom. Uh, my dad tried to, to find a normal job. Just, I mean, he interviewed at Perkins, but God kept drawing him back in going, you, you can't do that. The only thing you can do is be a pastor. And I remember um, him sending out his resume and we were living with my grandmother and, and uh, I was going in uh, to high school. And there was a church called, uh, I don't even remember the name, it was out in Grady, Florida. He had preached and was excited about his preaching and he got done and we were getting in the car. And I remember complaining immediately, going, Dad, this is middle of nowhere. This is a kindergarten through 12th grade school. They don't have football. You know, what am I gonna do? And he was going, son, I'm willing to go wherever God wants us to be. But I remember him saying, God, please don't let this be it. Um, and, and I just, I, 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 and my mom's sitting there going, yes, Lord. I mean, we're praying together in the car. And um, we get back and uh, about two days later, you know, the, the church had called and was like, you know, I, I believe this is, we, you know, we, we want to extend a call. I remember my dad sitting in my grandmother's, um, she had a living room off of the kitchen. I remember him sitting in a chair by himself, thinking I was asleep. <laughs> and hearing him uh, praying, God, if this is it, we're going. God, if this be your will, my family and I are willing. And so um, to hear that as a 14 year old young man who at the time didn't believe in Jesus himself, 
to see that my father was so committed not only to his faith, but to his family. Five and a half years later, that made a big impact in my life. Because the night I walked the aisle, that was one of the things I remembered. Um, but my dad said you know, that he had never got a D's about it, that God, that wasn't where God wanted him. And I mean, he could have easily went, all right, we'll take it. You know, it's the only one out there. It's the only thing I got. It's my last resort. And he could have easily done it, but he listened to God. And about three days after that, but my dad got a phone call from Linda Solette. So today we're going to celebrate our pastor, Winston Butler's 25th anniversary as the pastor of Densmore Baptist Church. So I guess really when we think about it, this is all your fault. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I'm proud of that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Linda Solette. I was on the search committee that called Winston Butler to this church 25 years ago. It was an interesting time in my life because I was the chairman of the deacons and we didn't have a pastor. And my wife was on the search committee. It was, it was kind of scary because we're in Densmore and we have a tendency to have pastors that stay a long time. And we had had two pastors recently that had just not stayed very long, had just not been a good fit for our church. And we're in a church where everybody knows everybody. And they've got to fit in with all of us. And some of us are a little crazy. And we had this... Um, resume from somebody in Tennessee, and it was Winston. But then we couldn't find him. Over the holidays, I just I just felt led to find Winston. And all I could remember was his last name was Butler, and his first name was Weird. It was starting with a W, and I don't know how I, re I don't remember how I found it. But I think I called Debbie's mother's house. <laughs> And I asked for a Winslow. <laughs> and so um, I guess they figured out who I was talking about because a lot of people still call him other than Winston. A lot of people still call him Winston. There is no T. It's Winson. So Winson came to the phone and I talked with him and he agreed to meet with the committee within the next couple of weeks. So we met with him and Debbie and we just, we just loved him from the very beginning. I can remember we went to, to a small church. Uh, I almost think it was in like Keystone Heights. Uh, the search committee and me, and we, we went down there to hear him preach. He had hair then. Everybody kind of fell in love with him. He came back, he preached at our church one day, and then we had Everybody stay after church and meet and greet with him that afternoon. And it was just a fit. We just knew it was a fit right then and there. And it just didn't take us long to decide that this is the man that, that God had for us. And we ended up calling him to be our pastor. And 25 years later here, he still stands. And we are very, very grateful for it. Just from the moment my dad and uh, stepped in Densmore. It felt like home. From the old sanctuary to, to the people, to everything that we had come in contact with. I remember my dad preaching his, the, the message of in lieu of a call there. I remember the meal afterwards. I remember coming home after that and there being a different feeling. And I remember different prayers. And I remember him saying, son, this is where I'm gonna retire. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Gina. We both go to Densmore Baptist Church. I've been there since the building. We cleaned blocks when I was a teenager. And like I say, I grew up in that church from the time we moved out in Densmore when I was eight years old. You will say anything, you just go sit there. When we got married, um, like I said, that was a really the first time me meeting him was at our wedding. And uh, I didn't know who he was. He come up to the house and in his long black robe, and I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? But um, it's funny because when we got married, I had to, we didn't have a ring bearer. And uh preacher went through the ceremony, came part to do the rings and everything. The preacher said, um, 
where's the rings? And I turned around and called my dog down and Preacher stood there just, I mean, his jaw just dropped because here's my little dog. She's running down with a pill on her. And this is when the Preacher had hair, hair and a black Well, robe. he had the wig. <laughs> the but, the uh, toupee. Hello, uh, my name's Gator Collins. I'm a kids pastor here at the church at Dinsmore. And I, let me talk about my good friend, Winston Butler. I got saved in 1999 and the first church I visited was here. And I remember meeting him and having conversation. He was always engaging and he's thoughtful and all that. And he's one of my best friends in ministry. But let me get through all the sappy stuff because that's not how I really know him. What I know Winston at is the fun-loving character that he really is. Let me give you two incidents of my life in his life. And it all rolls around this piece right here that he no longer has. We were playing softball my first year being, being at the church. And there was a shallow fly ball hit to right center. And as Butler come barreling in like a football player that he was, and Winston's going out, Butler slid, took Winston's leg out, and also his hat with this piece right here. And I saw it, I saw him, my eyes got this big, and I looked down there and he dove on his hat and toupee like he was an NFL football player diving on a fumble. Okay, so when we were on the search committee, somebody had told us that Winston Butler was gonna come and, and talk with us and that it, he was a little short, bald guy. But when he got there, he was he was short, but he was definitely not bald. And as soon as he left the room, uh, Norman looked at me and said, was that hair real? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what toupees look like or anything like that, but there was a whole five minute discussion about whether the hair was real or not. And I don't know, maybe it was 10 years later, he made this big time bet with somebody that if we got a, so many kids at this rally that he would shave his head. And I think he slanted that bet so that he could shave his head and just be done with the hair. One year he come to me and he said, hey, I got a bet for you. And I was a youth pastor here. And he says, you got a Super Bowl party coming up and I want to bet you. He said, if you get 100 or more or whatever the number was, he says, I'll shave my head. I remember going in there and we were counting. We were at 98 and I sent somebody out down the road. I don't care who you bring in here. You better go get two more to make sure he loses this. We got the head count and it was like 104 and it was amazing that we got that. So the next day he's without his toupee and everybody told him he shaved his head. There wasn't much shaving going on at this point. There was more like take off, sit down, and retire it. And then he took off this little edge right here. But he's such a character that he wanted to do it in grand style. My name is Dr. Keith Foskey, and I am the pastor of Sovereign Grace Family Church. I met Dr. Butler in seminary at Jacksonville Baptist Theological Seminary. He was one of my professors. In fact, I took several classes with him well, one of the things I remember most about the class, that he was very meticulous in how we structured our notes. And that, that has carried over in a lot of ways to understanding that the little things are important. In seminary, he would always tell us stories about how whenever he would do counseling, he would never sit behind his desk, but that he would always come out and sit with the people. And uh, that again had a real important effect on me. I can see him doing whatever it took to uh, eliminate obstacles between him and other people when he was trying to do counseling. Churches today, ministers pass through very quickly. And uh, it's very rare that a minister would have a ministry at a single church for more than just a few years. And Dr. Butler has been a model in our community of faithfulness to a single church uh, for 25 years, which is just an amazing accomplishment. Being around the two of you, I notice um, you guys have a really unique relationship. Like, um, he's a little jumpy. And every now and then you tend to take advantage of that. As, as many times as I possibly can. Probably the reason why he's so jumpy is because I do it so much. It is just really funny to see Brian scare him. His, <laughs> I'm telling you, his dad is just 
He just jumps back. When he gets scared, is there something he says all the time when he does it? God bless America. <laughs> Um, one of the best ever was when he was uh, he had come in from home from a deacon's meeting, and the deacon's meeting had went a little long. I think it was like 10 o'clock, and nobody would uh, give him a ride home because they were just wanting to watch him walk through the woods. And um, right as he came into the garage, you had to go to the back of the garage to turn the light on. And right before he could grab the light, I grabbed his legs from underneath the the Ford Explorer and him and go <laughs> like that. He jumped so high, like at his five foot three or five foot four height, he almost his head on the ceiling. He's God bless America. God bless America. <laughs> um, I've I've scared him in the hallways at the church. I've scared him. Uh, I, I laid down in the back seat of his car one time when he didn't know that I was back there. Uh, jumped out. I've um, crawled down the stairs at him in the dark from upstairs. And I, I thought that literally that time I thought I was going to take him to the hospital, honestly. The time Tyson Love was in a garbage bag and he went to go take the garbage out and he jumped out at him. Um, I think Joey Love was in a, a, a gorilla suit one time in, in the woods. And if we could ever get that video footage, I would love to see that. People still don't call him Winson, which I guess is an odd name, but his name is Winson. You learn people's names. And there are so many people that still say Winston, and so many people that, like me, called him Winslow from the beginning. It's funny that uh, everybody always gets his name wrong. I call him something different usually every week just to harass him. And uh, I've been doing that for 25 years. I didn't know what to call him at first. and. You know, pastor just too formal for me. And, uh, you know, Dr. Butler was too formal. And I said, man, I just got to do preacher, preacher man. So, and, that, and it's always stuck. I, we've always called him preacher, preacher man. He's not, he's not our pastor. He's, he's our friend. friend. I kind of admire him because he's, he's never really met a stranger. He talked talk to the fence post. Uh, and uh, he, he's always, uh, Always witnessing for the Lord, you know, and, and doing, um, you know, just he has these little ways of, of working it in whenever he's talking to somebody. My dad has never met a stranger, ever. He'll have a kiss strike a conversation with anybody he comes with. And it's not because he's just bored and doesn't want to talk. It's because he cares for people spiritually enough to say, I want to have a conversation with this person. So hopefully I can share the gospel. I'm Loretta Gregory. I've been at Dinsmore Baptist Church for 50 years. Andy and I were dating when we started going to Dinsmore. Uh, we only left a short time because he was in the military. But even on leave, um, and even when I would come back without him, when he would go TDY, um, I went to that church. Dinsmore has always been our church and I've enjoyed working with our pastor for 21 years. He's been good to our family, not just the church family, but us as individuals. He's been good to me. I can't think of a time when he hasn't been ministering. He goes out um, to the gate station. He ministers to people there. That's what he preaches. That's just his message, his life. He's a good man. He's a good pastor. And he's, he's a, a great good friend. friend. I know I'll out, he'll outlive me, and praise the Lord, I know where I'm going because of him. If you were gonna describe your dad's ministry in one word, what would be the word you'd pick? You only get one. Caring. I mean, that's probably the hardest thing to do is to take his ministry and put it into one word. Because he, in, he in, in, in involves so much from, not only he cares for people, but he loves people. He loves the word. And he loves being the pastor. 
I remember asking him one time, you ever get tired of going to the hospital? And he looked at me and said, no. And we had a discussion on the way back. He said, I love going because I want to know how these people really are. And sometimes it's just out of being there for three or four minutes. Sometimes it's sitting with somebody much longer. Sometimes it's visiting somebody in a nursing home or going to a family's house at two o'clock in the morning. It, it just cares. And then he cares for them spiritually. To me, Winston's greatest asset is his compassion. Nobody can match his compassion. He is there for anybody and everybody. He will come to the hospital and visit you. He will visit your cousin's cousin, your aunt's cousin's mother-in-law's father-in-law sister. He will go anywhere for anybody at any time. His, he just has such wonderful, wonderful compassion. When my brother-in-law unexpectedly passed away in a, in a horrible manner, he spoke with me on the phone almost all the way to South Carolina. And that just meant the world to me that he even said, I will come, I will come up to South Carolina for you or with you. And, and that just meant the world to me. I just needed him on the phone. I didn't need him to come. I just needed him on the phone. And he just has this wonderful, wonderful compassion. Tell me what you have learned from Winston as your pastor. What has he taught you? I, I guess the best thing I've learned from him, he has that compassion for people. And I, I feel like when you're hurting, he hurts. And he feels that deep in his, in his soul. Our dinner meetings, like the business meetings and things like that, Winston will be the last one in line because he wants to make sure everyone else is fed. I admire that in him. That is his, his calling. He wants to make sure everyone else, else is taken care of before he takes care of himself. On Thursday night or every other Thursday night when he goes to, um, to teach at the college, he will, he will call me. He did the same thing with my husband when we lived in Georgetown, he would call him every, well back then it was every Thursday night, and he and my husband would have devotion together. And my husband looked forward to that every, every Thursday night. If I went to get the phone, he would say, oh no, that's my phone call. Your brother's calling to talk to me. That meant so much that I could never ever let my, could, it never could ever express to him how much that meant to him in return how much it meant to me. He's a good man. A uh, pastor's life is not easy. And uh, I, I don't know how he, he keeps a smile a lot of times with the, the funerals and all the other uh, uh, difficulties that he has to deal with and, and help people with. That, that's uh, It's like a daily thing, you know. And, he can do four or five plus funerals a week sometimes, and it's just amazing uh, to me that, that he can, you know, make it through that and still, you know, keep a smile on his face on Sunday. If I had to describe Winston in one word, I, I believe the word would be um, caring. I mean, he's constantly caring about other people's feelings. And I tell you, um, we weren't friends when you say your pastor and you are friends, he's your pastor, but we got to be very close over the last probably, you know, I'd say 20 years. And I, I just, he, he's been there for me through so many things that happened in my life. Buddy, when he's on game, I'm telling you, um, in a hospital room or at a funeral, and you know, even in, you know, at a wedding, he's, he's inspired. He, he's able to say the right things just to give people the comfort and ease that they need. And there's many in this church that will say the same thing because he's preached a lot of funerals for their families and everything. I mean, he preached my dad's funeral and just the words just can't say enough about him. Love him, awesome. On a serious note, Winston is really one of my best friends. He's been there for my hardest times of my life. There's been many times where I've been in his office and I needed that friend, one to cry with, and him just sit there and listen. 
I remember one time, I'll never forget it, it's one of my darkest days on, that I've had. And I remember going to his office and the whole time I just sat there and cried. And I just remember him saying, just say, bless his heart, bless his heart, bless him, Lord, the whole time. And it wasn't like for two minutes, it wasn't five minutes, this was 30 minutes to an hour and he just sat there. Everything went secondary with that person that sat in front of him. And I think about how genuine that man is. And I will never, ever forget, and I cherish those moments. His heart stopped twice. And uh, of course we notified the preacher. We didn't know what was going on. And I'm sitting there doing the CPR on him and everything. And the preacher come up and him and Butler did. The preacher was there. I mean, it couldn't have been more than 20 minutes after we called when really? my dad had the car accident. We weren't even going to church then because we had started going to another church. And uh, I don't even know how he found out. But how who found out? Preacher found out that my dad had been in an accident. And uh, he was right there. And so I've gotten to see not just the 25 years at Dinsmore, I've seen 40 years of a man that's not just a, a pastor, but a godly man. And uh, what I've been able to see is what I want to be. I hope to be him to my son. And uh, I gotta stop for a second. My dad has instilled in me in the 25 years of being here, not only a love for the Lord, not only a love for my family, but I watched a man love a church. I watched a man not just love a church, but love its people. Good, bad, and indifferent. No matter when times were tough, no matter when times were great, when families were broken in their homes, when tragedy hit families, I can't say I've ever had a better mentor in my life that could teach me how to be a pastor than my father. When I say that I hope one day to grow up to be like him, I mean it. Dr. Butler, Winston, uh, I appreciate you being my friend. I appreciate you always making me feel very welcome, both in your church and in your life. I appreciate uh, the example that you've set for younger ministers and the continued faithfulness that you have in our community. I pray that God will continue to bless you with many years of faithful service in His kingdom. Hi, I'm Wanda Reese, the principal at Dinsmore Elementary. Pastor Butler, I just want to say congratulations on 25 years here at Dinsmore Baptist Church. Thank you so much for being such a blessing to our community. We love you. Hi, this is Melody Zortia. I'm a teacher at Dinsmore Elementary next door. Congrats, Pastor Winston, on 25 years. I'm so proud of all the work that you've done and so honored to know you. And um, I just wish you another amazing 25 years after this. Winston Butler, we thank you for your 25 years you've been with us at Densmore Baptist Church. Hey Doc, I just want to congratulate you on 25 years of ministry serving this community in Densmore. You are a light in this world and I thank you so much for it. God bless you, brother. Winston Butler, thank you for 25 years of service to Densmore Baptist Church. You married me and my wife on the front steps of this church. We appreciate everything you've done for us. I know myself and my family appreciate you a lot, and uh, we're hoping for many more years of uh, good times with you, buddy. Thank you for everything you've ever done for us. Winston, thank you so much for all that you do for us, and we love you so much. And congratulations on 25 years of wonderful ministry. Winston Butler, we're thankful for your 25 years of being here, and hope you have another 25 years. Happy anniversary, 25 years. Happy anniversary, brother. We love you. Uh-oh, I forgot what we were supposed to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> get over here. All right, here That's we go. my mom right there. Hi, Pastor Butler, and thank you so much for 25 years of faithful service to this church. We love you. All right, Brother Winston, we want to thank you for 25 wonderful years and a lot more to come. 
I thank God that he brought you to Dinsmore. You've been a great pastor. Thanks for 25 years. We love you. Pastor, thank you so much for 25 years of wonderful service. We love you and appreciate you so much. Hey, Papa, just wanted to say thank you for 25 years and that we love you. Winston Butler is my best friend. We've been together for 25 years and I appreciate his fellowship and him being my leader and pastor at the church. Anytime I wanted him for anything, he would come and help me, and I appreciate that. He's a, he's a good, good pastor, and I thank him for it. I think we've been very blessed to have him. I really do. Hope he'll, he'll be there another 25 years. <laughs> he'll be, uh, what, 130 then? And I'll still call him Winslow or Winston. Keep on with what you're doing. I know it isn't easy a lot of times, but it is appreciated. I appreciate whenever uh, I was in the hospital and, and you were there with Linda the whole time. And, uh, you know, not many pastors do that now, and it was good. Winston, thank you so much for 25 years of service. We are so honored to have you as the pastor of our church for that long. I'm so thankful for the relationship that I have with you and the relationship with, that you have with our church. And I wish you more years to come. I love you. Winston, I want to tell you, brother, you have been like a blood brother to me, even though we're brothers in Christ. And I want to thank you for the sacrifices that you made over these many, many years. You've made sacrifices at other ministries you've had before our church where you've served, but at our church, for the sacrifice you and your family have made serving our Lord here at this church, uh, many countless nights at hospitals, uh, funerals in the heat, funerals in the rain, everything that you've done to help people and comfort them, you know, it, I want to thank you for that. And you will always have a special place in my heart for just what you've done for us and for our church. I mean, just love you, brother. Really do. Pastor, I want to thank you personally for serving Dismore Baptist Church for the last 25 years, one quarter of a century. It has flown by. But above all, Pastor Butler, I want to thank you for always being steadfast when it came to preaching God's Word. You have never wavered. You have always been honest and sincere with us, and we appreciate it so much. Thank you again, your brother in Christ and your vegan, Stan Carter. I appreciate how you've treated others and how you've worked at the church so hard, always being faithful. And I appreciate you be, for being my friend. Thank you, Brother Winston, for always being devoted, for always sharing your life with all of us. Thank you for 25 years of dedicated devotion. Dad, I love you. And I want to thank you for being um, the consistent dad, the consistent pastor, the man that I can count on, that taught me how to be a dad and is teaching me how to be a pastor. I want to tell you not only do I love you, but thank you for being the influence in my life that allowed me to see my need for Christ and my need to love people and my desire to follow in the footsteps of what God's called me to. And that's some big shoes to fill. Thank you. Hey, baby brother, I just want to say thank you for your 25 years of ministry. I want you to know that I love you with all my heart and I love Dinsmore Baptist Church because they've made you a part of their life. I love you and thank you.